first get wise to it, more or less um, in the ghetto. You know, we, we, we come in contact with these elements, these cultural elements. But now that we look at the music industry and we look at the society and, and Freemasonry in this time of judgment, we have to break down some of these terminologies. And in this video series, um, this video series that's called The Music Industry, it has like how many parts? It has a lot of parts, but we're trying to do our best to, to download and disseminate and distribute it. It's breaking down some of the elements in these videos, you know, where a lot of these musical artists are so-called down with the Illuminati or with certain satanic, certain satanic orders, or as we have suggested to use certain satanic um, schools of thought. And so we have to understand this idea of schools of thought, because the schools of thought, how, how can I say this? Let me break it down like this. If you're born and raised and socialized in the ghetto, you know, people say, oh, you got a ghetto mentality, or I know ghetto, I'm hood, because you have gone through that school of thought. We used to call... Um, the school of hard knocks, you know, as a certain Rastafari brotherhood. So some of us used to refer to it as the school of hard knocks. New Jerusalem classroom is a school of hard knocks. It's when you come to the consciousness of um, seeking Ja, seeking Rastafari. But in that process of seeking Rastafari, in that process of of, of repentance, being born again, and then growing in the knowledge and going through the experiences and coming into that conformity with Christ, we go through a lot of hard knocks. We go through a lot of situations, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of follies, a lot of undercrowns, um, fuckery, in other words, fornication under the crown of the king. We go through a lot of these experience, experiences, but if we hold to the spirit of truth, and, and love of the truth, and um, we're able to overcome, you know, you know, with patience, the patience of the Caduceon, the patience of the saints. What's a saint? What's a Caduce? One who seeks to set themselves um, separate from the world, be in the world, but not of the world. In fact, we have Numbers chapter 6, where it says when either man or woman should separate themselves, they shall vow a vow of the, na of the netzer or the nazar. And symbolically, that's where the Rastafari dreadlocks, so forth and so on. But our point is this, that anyone who seeks to be godly or to resemble Jah and Jah's, and Jah's way and walk Jah's way, walk Yah's way, um, will suffer persecution. And so that's the New Jerusalem school of hard knocks. So we get shaped, we, we get educated, we either get left behind or we have to redo, so-called like a semester, redo certain lessons, or we move ahead, we move forward. But it all depends on our own learning the lesson. And, and learning the lesson doesn't mean just, yeah, 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 I know the lesson. But learning the lesson really means, as, as we would say, showing and proving. So in this video, in this video series, um, Music Industry, we've been checking out a couple of clips from it. And it's very interesting. And we just want to, like, pause it right here and touch on the terminology. And this is where some of these terminologies are very very, um, are very, very interesting, a lot of these terminologies. And I want to show how the etymology, how the Bible even says in the beginning, what is the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Um, that might be variously interpreted, depends on your school of thought. The Tower of Babel seems to speak through a parabolic language and a parabolic a kind of a cultural um, sociology that all the peoples, no matter what the different cultures they may be today, 
came out of some 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 common some some common origin. This is what we get people saying it all came out of Africa, so forth and so on. As, as a as a as a as a parable, as as a as a symbolic, um, even an antidote, uh, uh, an antidote, an antidote, an antidotally speaking, that may be true. But let's just deal with this right here. So I am not go through this sometimes because I like for you to get the background to this, and we are still seeking to articulate this, but instead of going through a, a bunch of like a, a bunch of editing process. We, we want to keep it keep it as raw as possible. So Ciara does this video, right? And I don't know the name of the video, the song, so from so I'm, I'll tell you the part or I will put in the description the description so from so you can find it there. But she's talking about something called um called a go gal, right? And I heard her say go gal, right? A go gal. And I said, What's a go gal? So she's explaining, you know, it's this kind of weird this this weird um kind of diva, you know, what they're doing to reshape um the image of woman. Um we saw the clip with uh Whitney Houston and, and the Metropolis, this robotic some call it this robotic you know this this robotic agenda of of the illuminati so forth and so on but this term go gal is what really inspired me to say let me bring this to you the go gal go gal right go gal can also be go go we can have a go go girl right one time the go go girl was basically thought to be a prostitute, right? A prostitute, right? Um, and, and, and that's what they say. They say that sex sex is what sells. And now there's this this um this image, you know, that's being perpetrated and has been perpetrated at an ever increasing and accelerating rate ever since the so called um white feminist movement. But now it has been is generally the, quote, feminist or femaleist movement. Be that as it may. So the go-go gal, the go-go girl, the prostitute, um, we could put the whore, all right, and we could put the hoe, you understand? Then we have the bitch, and that's very interesting when you get into the etymology of bitch. Not just that it means female dog. That's all kindergarten. Were you on that level, if that's the highest of your knowledge of of bitch, you know, as a female dog, um, there's still 90%. It's like when they say that people only use 10% of their minds, 10% of their brains. Well, think about etymology of words. Think about the knowledge of the real origins of words, because in these words we express our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, our spirit, our soul, but if we don't know the meaning of the word, then we stumble on in darkness. We assume, but we do not know. So we are to know the truth, not assume, well, because it's used, and, hey, I hear people saying go gal, or what's a go gal? A go gal actually comes from the east. Very interesting, and it's what's called a ko gal. You can go to Japan, and in Japanese culture, a kogal. Now, a kogal basically is a kind of a Japanese type of a prostitute. Now, people say, well, what does it have to do with the hip-hop, the R&B, the music industry, the divas, so forth and so on? The, the immediate connection that we can put to this is um, with, like, the nail salons and, and the hair shops and you know what's his name did a a, a a movie about good uh good hair chris rock did this movie about good hair all the monies that are spent and how much money um black mainly woman and other but mainly black women and and people who you would think would say that we are impoverished and we don't have money and resources for schools and for a lot of other things but they have a lot of money to spend on so-called false 
of beautification. But be that as it may, this Kogal image is is a a, a Eastern Oriental or Asian thing. But it's not just a fashion statement. There's something deeper that we see in this. Because do you remember the whole Tower of Babel story? And and we're coming back to that kind of idea because in Tower of Babel was when we based on the interpretations, assume that all the people spoke one language. But the Lord came down to see what was going on. You understand? And because their, their, the imagination of their hearts was still wicked and was not inclined towards righteousness, the interpretation, popular interpretation of the Tower of Babel is that the Lord scattered them so they would not be able to understand one another's language. So basically what happened was that we had all these different cultures. This is where we get uh, tribes and clans and, and ethnicity and nations and nation states and different peoples who have many similarities but different nuances, and many of them didn't really understand as time and time went on. They didn't understand one another's language. So when you look at Africa, they say in Africa there's like thousands of languages. Um, this is why when you look at what's going on in the Middle East and the Far East and people are fighting, these are different tribes. Now, one of the signs in the last days would be that nation would um, rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and tribe against tribe and people against people. So there would be clashes of different cultures. And in fact, when this whole terrorism thing was, 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 was struck up again around 2001, we started to hear the popular refrain of a clash of civilizations. This is interesting. A class of civilizations. Have you ever stopped to think or ask yourself or anybody else who might know? How many civilizations are there? I mean, right now. I mean, we know there's Western civilization. Well, who's clashing with Western civilization? But then when we go back to Genesis chapter 11. Now, let's look at this. Now, of course, we're just making an etymological link between go-gal, go-go-girl, prostitute, whore, whole bitch with the East Asian Japanese kogal. And look it up for yourself. Look up Kogal. Some of the stuff might be a little pornographic or whatever like that, but basically it's the same thing we're seeing in these videos. But I say, wait, how in the world does this culture halfway around the world start to get into the ghetto? Now, a lot of us would think that a lot of this looking Asian and doing your hair up and your eyes and this one look a little Asian and getting the weaves and all this kind of look that is the popular look, especially of um, inner city black woman and a and black woman, especially in America, we think that this is just indigenous. You know, somehow this is, this is not the Negro that you know. You know, this is a whole new Negro. I mean, this is, this is a whole new paradigm. How did this paradigm come about and how is this paradigm even of beauty being projected from the ghetto. When did it creep in? Look at, look at your Bibles for a moment. Look at Genesis again, and you'll notice something very interesting. We're going to look right here. This is the Kumash. This is the Torah right here. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 11. It might read a little bit different than your King James, but get your King James all the same. And we're going to go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Kogal, Gogal. Kogal, Gogal. Kogal, prostitute, Gogal, go, go, girl. And then even that go, go, girl part, you can put the disturbia. There's a disturbia that comes in here. You understand? It's part of what happens with prostitution, whor whoring, you know, whoring after what? What does the Lord say? What does John say about the lost sheep, these lost Negroes? They go a whoring after foreign gods. Foreign, they're not trying to look African. Did they come from 
Asia. They come from Japan. They come from China. No, but they're trying India even with the fake hair. No, but they are worshiping and whoring after false gods and foreign gods and gods, get this, whom their fathers and mothers, you know, some of the Negroes in America never knew. Never knew. It might be shocking to some of the older folks, but then we see some of the older women and even the men, you know, being teenagers, you know, and, and trying to, you know, cougars and all this other kind of crazy stuff, these, these kind of crazy ideals that are going on. But from a biblical, scriptural, and end-time perspective, it is not so strange when you look at it. So the whole earth was of one language and one speech. That means there is a, a, a certain logic of what is right and what is wrong universally embedded in all human beings. Now, whether culture and nurture and nature and upbringing twisted that and turns that, you know, like they say, children are not really racist, white boy or white girl or whatnot, but they learn these things they say, you know, culturally and socially, so forth and so on. So that means that if we are all created by the true God, you understand? That means we all, even the enemy, even Satan and his and her accomplices, even they know what is right and what is wrong at a certain point. But this does not mean that this consciousness of right and wrong can become burnt out. You see, one can burn out. They can have their consciences, as the scripture says, seared. So they knew what was right and what was wrong, but they ignored it. They, 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 they cast it off. They turned away from truth, and therefore truth or God turns away from them. And this is the disturbia that we're beginning to see, you understand, as a, as a type of a disease. They even said that they have these... Um, these girls who are having this kind of like they have some, some type of body tics. I forgot what they call this kind of. It's a disturbia. But more of that is going to happen because of the particular school of thought that people think in. Because the consciousness that they think in, it attracts or detracts certain interdimensional entities that generations of religious, theological human beings call demons and, 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 and fallen angels, so forth and so on. And, and this is the time. So the whole earth was of one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar, now, you're going to find something, as you said, the, the word kogao is a, is a Japanese term, you understand? But the Asians, like Africans, they have a common civilization. So their civilization is in the east, right? One might, say, one might say the far east, right? It says, as they journeyed where? It says, and as they journeyed. East. Now, if you look in your King James Bible for a moment, if you look in the King James Bible for a moment, right? If you look in the King James Bible for a moment, see, he was reading the Jewish the Jewish one, but let's get something that you might be more familiar with right here. It says, this is translated a little bit different. It says, as they journeyed from the east. See, if you're looking at King James, it says in 11, Genesis 11 and 1, as they journeyed, what? From the east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar. So they journeyed where? They journeyed from the east. You know, I mean, you all know China is taking over, right? You know, the east is taking over. People thought it would be Japan before, but it seems to be more China now, right? So they journeyed where? From the east. And they found a plain, a plain 
in the land of Shinar. The word Shinar is really the word China. Now, some linguists will say, no, it's not China. It cannot be China because there's an R here and it's just similarity a little bit, you know, but this is a SH and this is a CH, so Shina is not China. But, but let's stop. Let's put this in, in so-called biblical, historical, geographical kind of context here. The East, they were journeying from where? From the East. This is after the whole Noah's Ark incident, right? And the mountain where they say that the ark landed on, according to the Bible and according to the basic um, interpretations thereof, is um, called Ararat or Ararat. And Ararat or Ararat is in what we know as, as, as the land of Turkey or some say uh, the Caucasus Mountain Turkey area over in that, that Indo-European, just where 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 India or the East meets with the with with the West or with Europe. So the the, the meeting of 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 Indo India Europe. So right there is where the Ark was. So they were journeying from the East. Why? Because they're trying to get back to Africa. They're trying to reach back to Africa. But who are they? Who are they? This is the most Interesting part of the scripture, it doesn't say that Noah and his children, everywhere else you see Noah, he'll name the children. We know who, who was in the, in, in the ark as far as the human beings, the eight souls. It already gives us a litany of, of begots, this one begot, that one begot, so forth and so on. But then it comes down to this point right here that the whole earth, that means that everybody in the earth was of one language and one speech. It's almost like Internet today. It's almost like this, um, what they call it, um, social media that's bringing everybody together. So even culturally, these so-called indigenous cultural firewalls are breaking down, and everyone is coming into some common culture of some, some modern, they're coming into some confusion that is their shared confusion. And that's where we get these terminologies like go-gal, right? Go-go-gal. Sierra talking about a go-gal image she's trying to project, and then we can link it easier with the go-gal image of the East. But you have to understand that these prostitutes, whores, and, and, and part of the worship of these false images, biblically speaking, is called whorism. Not tourism, you know what I mean? But whorism. In fact, they actually conduct tourism so they can engage in whorism. But be that as it may, they were joining these unnamed people. So there's a question mark about who were these beings? But let's see if we can figure out who they were. We know that they were coming not from Africa, but they were coming from China area, from China and the Far East in the direction of the Fertile Crescent, in the direction of the fertile and rich lands of Africa and the so-called Middle East area. But before they got to Africa and the Middle East area and Ethiopia, before they even got to Arabia, it says that they found a plain in the land of Shedna. Who in the world were these people? And why does the Bible not name them? Now, many would tell you that this is Nimrod. This is what they'll tell you. It's that Ethiopian named Nimrod. Well, Nimrod was a son of who? Cush. Cush is a, the biblical Hebrew name for, for what, what country or people? Et, Ethiopia or Ethiopia. Well, um, if I wanted to go to uh, Babylon, right, which is Iraq, modern Iraq, 
um, and I was coming from East Africa, I would be coming from the West, not the East. Now, you can always say that, well, maybe there was a different arrangement of things, but we're not fantasizing now. We're just trying to understand the logic of what we have here and interpret it in the context. So these they are not they. It sounds like this thing that they used to have, this, this TV show. You, you remember the show on TV? I used to like to watch it. It's not on TV, but now it used to be called Them. They had a movie called They Live. You remember in that movie, They Live, there was a lot of um, subliminal suggestion in um, that movie, um, They Live. You can connect even that movie, V. Remember that series that was on, I think it's back on TV now, V. But this is how the Bible says. It says they, it says them, but it does not give them any name. Now, this is interesting because if these they and them were human beings of the lineage of God-created human beings, not artificial humans, but if they were really, truly human beings descended from Noah, descended from the Ankh, from life, they would be listed, there would be a name for them. It, it would name them something because we have a whole list of who's who, who begat who, so forth and so on. As we study the scripture from there, we begin to see a lot of links so we can trace different personalities as they come up later on in the Bible to their origins, to the book of origins. You ever hear people say, be human? You ever hear people say that? Or this, this one is, is one that's interesting. I was having a human experience. What the WTF? What the fuck? Human beings have human experiences. Human beings don't have to try to be human. Imagine a dog or a cat or a bird or any other creature trying to be what they already are trying. It's like, is, is this a cartoon? Or are there other beings amongst us who are not human who are trying to be human and is one of the first signs of it, the Tower of Babel. And are we experiencing this same sort of invasion? It's probably too late to like say we're going to stop it because it's already happening. We're beginning to see the signs. We're beginning to see the signs of it. And I know this might seem a little far, a far-fetched for some, how we went from Ciara's video and, and the interview where she's talking about Gogal, linking that with the Kogal from the East, from Japan, then linking that with China or China, and then this mysterious, let's put a question mark here. Because the Bible doesn't say that they are descended from any human being. These beings who were journeying from the east, and then they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven. So this is one of the first examples that we have, nearly conservatively speaking, this could be about 5,000, um, between five and even 6,000, this portion of the Bible, if we put it in a, in, in, in a, a historical um, time frame and context, that's about 5,000 or so, give or take, years ago, who were building the first skyscrapers, the first skyscrapers. You know, some of the tallest skyscrapers in the world, basically, are in America, 
majority of them in New York City, but moreover are in China, the East. You see what I'm saying? They like to build tall. You understand? But now the purpose of these towers right here, we think was a little bit different because we think that these beings were reptilians, were reptilians that um, either they were already down here or either they had crashed, either they had come up from the waters like a lot of the Anunnaki, you know, if you look at a lot of the Anunnaki stuff, it talk about the Dagon and the fish people that somehow they came from under the waters. Now think about it. They were hybrids before the flood. Now, those hybrids who were land hybrids, you know, like say if somebody was hybrided with, with, with fish or aquatic life and the flood came, would the flood destroy them? Did the flood kill the fish? Most likely not. It might have killed some fish, but the majority of fish and, 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 and living creatures of the water were basically unaffected by the flood that the only creatures or beings that were killed were those who had to live on dry land. And the flood caused there to be, the global flood, no dry land for them to live. Now, we think that, well, that killed off all the people, all the beings, and it was just Noah and his family. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not so. And people say, well, what's the proof of that? The proof of that is the very Babylonian and Numa Elish, the tablets, the other art and facts that we have that demonstrates that they worship some type of hybrid sort of beings that they assume to be gods, and some call them gods, but properly they were hybrid demonic entities that came up from underneath the water. Now, whether there are stargates and so forth and so on in the waters, it's very likely. In fact, there is more um, space under the ocean than on all the land masses combined. You know what I mean? It's very, 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 very deep. And even the Bible tells us in other places concerning fallen angels and fallen demons that there are some fallen beings who originated out of the waters and some of them who even dwell in the waters. This is where you get these movies about like the Loch Ness monster, the swamp, the, mo the monster of the swamp, so forth and so on, you know, who live in these swamps and comes up out of the water. But you have many different cultures who had very little to do with each other and besides, they probably could not understand one another's language. But they all testify to the very same kind of beings who were not human, but who had transformed themselves or took possession of human beings in order to promote their own agenda. And today we have these very same beings and this very same agenda being done. In fact, this is what the Lord, what Jah said when he says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The problem is this, that most folks, most of your pastors and preachers and most of your theologians, they don't know and have not done due diligence to honestly find out what happened in the beginning? Take all the racial, you know, black man is nothing and black man never done nothing. He never built the pair. All that, those lies. Take all those lies out of it and just deal with the facts. See, this is hard for many of the white supremacist scholars because most of them haven't done that. We find that even among the best of them, we still find in their writings it creeps in some sort of discomfort with any great achievement by ancient black peoples because they've invested so much in the lie that black man came from the monkey instead of that black man and woman built the first monarchies. 
You understand? Built the first civilizations. You understand? Brought people together to live in a moral and a civilized way before this alien invasion. So we have this example right here because they're building these towers here, and they said, remember, we don't know who they are, but we can be assured of one thing, that whoever they are, they are not human. This is what we can be very, very, they're not human in the conventional sense of a human being descendant from Adam and Eve, descendant from Noah, descendant from other human beings, descendant from, we could say, the ancient and primordial black race. These are not these, are not these types right here. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven and let us make a name least we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now that's interesting right there. It's interesting that these people or beings, rather, we can't say people because they don't have a name that can identify them as what people. So the best we can say is these beings. These beings were very concerned about being scattered, being scattered upon the face of the earth. So what they wanted to do was to concentrate all of their power. Now, this kind of brings us right back to the music industry. You see what I'm saying? This brings us right back. See, in order to get into a lot of these industries, you have to go to the city, you have to go to the tower, and you have to sacrifice. You have to come into covenant with them. You can't just be a good musical artist, so forth and so on. They say, hey, your music is very good. We'll, we'll, we'll help you out and, and just, you don't have to go through no ritual, worship the devil and say, uh, no. Because they don't want it to be scattered. They want to concentrate all their power, concentrate all their wealth, concentrate all of their authority, you understand, in a city and in a tower. Now, uh, an example symbolically of these towers even today would be the obelisk. You understand the obel or rather the uncircumcised obelisk because Ethiopian obelisk is circumcised. But the other obelisk, including many of the so-called Egyptian obelisks, were uncircumcised obelisk because they go back to an earlier time when the fatherhood, was not known, but the motherhood was worshipped. And this is also brings us back to what's going on right now in this present time concerning the diva issue, concerning the, the baby mama drama issues, concerning the, 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 the men versus woman, woman versus men, the war of the sexes. See, what the sexes don't recognize is that this alien Influence is dividing and conquering humanity from Jah and from God's purpose to do its own evil, Luciferian, and Satanistic agenda. And this is what we see powerfully being demonstrated and manifested, especially in the particular music industry, right? But Let's just go a little bit more forward with this right here because what they feared, the very thing they feared is the very thing that happened to them. What do we mean? Well, we're speaking about the judgment. The judgment was the confusion of tongues. The judgment was the confusion of languages as go-gal, co-gal. It's the very same thing. You understand? Go-go girl. You understand? Being a prostitute, a whore a hoe, a bitch, but most people can't see that. They can't, they, they are confused, and confusion is Babylon. Confusion is Babylon, so it's to come out of confusion and to recognize and accept the truth of the matter. So the confusion of, of tongues is the judgment. Life continues under the Adamic and the Noahic covenants. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Now, people say, well, you see that right there? 
It's saying the children of men. Oh, well, yeah, it says the children of men. Because these beings took possession of human beings. These beings who were not human beings took possession of human beings and had the human beings acting like robots to do their will. It's the same thing that's going on in the music industry with the Illuminati, what we see going on in this end-time world order. It's the very same thing. People are under demonic possession. And, and it's so interesting. You could call it demonic possession. You could call it um, 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 alien superimposition. You know, you, you call it a lot of different sort of things. You know, you call it mind control. You know, and, and these are all different tactics and logistics, basically, to achieve the same strategy. And we're told about this in the very beginning. And Yahweh said, Behold.